Every day, y'all getting more Tower God episodes. We've lined it up perfectly such that by Sunday, Season 2, I'll be dropping the finale. And then we'll get on to the Season 2. We got cut content, Episode 10. Let's go. Episode 10 is where Tower of God starts to diverge a lot from how the webtoon intended it to be portrayed. In the anime, we only got to see a fraction of Kun's actual genius. There was a whole lot more to his plan than what we were actually shown. This looks... What, what is going on here? Why is Kun in... Mr. Laura's bed sheets saying, can't sleep with someone, join me. Including a fairly in-depth look into Cheating why on he did everything this way in the first place. Not only that, but there was also more backstory behind Bam's reasoning for following Rachel, plus Yu's reveal behind the true nature of the floor of test. All hmm. of which we'll go through in this video. Bro smuggling Bam in. So, let's begin. But I first, no ad. Okay, no ad this time. Episode 10. I guess a long time ago, he didn't have all these different sponsors on. That just started happening, like, after Tower of God. Beyond the Sadness. Covering chapter 52 to chapter 59 of the webtoon. Starting with the scene in the cafeteria, the atmosphere was a lot more somber due to the results of the test being blatantly obvious. Only Conan and Dodacy could be seen sharing each other's company. Well, barely. They really only said a few words with regard- <laughs> It just looks so weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just- this is not the characters that I know, man. It just looks so weird. The art, again, season one art, but like, holy, it's like, who are these characters, man? Straight up. A few words with regards to how the test had ended. You see, Endodacy was aware that Kun had planned for his team to lose, but she didn't actually believe that it was something that he'd be able to pull off. That's why Kun was a little bit upset that Endodacy didn't keep up her what own. What is Endodacy's hair, man? Apparently, she had made a deal with Kun to prevent Bam from meeting with Rachel. If she had actually kept her end of the deal, then Kun's plan would have been perfect. Unfortunately, that wasn't what happened. Even though Kun had meticulously planned every step, because Bam ended up meeting with Rachel, to him the end result was a complete failure. Now, the anime didn't explain what Kun's overall plan really was. I mean, we know he made his own team fail in order to help his friends on the other team. Yeah. But there was actually one objective that stood above all else. And- Scoping out Rachel? What was he doing? That was the one to save Rachel from Ho. Should've let her die. Well, even then, you know, Ghost took the life here, so it, it was all according to plan anyways. It was all Hwa Dion and Yu Sung's plan, it, it doesn't matter. So, Kun setting up his own team for failure wasn't just the stepping stones to facilitate Team B's success, but it was also to ensure that Bam had a reason to continue up the tower. As for why he would go so far, well, that's something that we'll get to in a few moments. My goodness. Right now. Every well, it's just as simple as Maria is, you know, to, to Maria is Rachel to Bam. So he doesn't want that to happen. He wants to protect Bam. He wants to make sure Rachel's good and all that stuff. But I don't know. I feel like he should have just told Bam, just like, nah, let me give you a story. This is exactly the same as what you're doing with Rachel right now. Fuck that bitch. Leave her. Everyone else still believed that Kun blamed himself for the loss. I mean, Kun did a really good job selling the act that he regretted making the decisions that he Oscar did. Oscar winning. So, there was a scene where Shibisu tries to make him feel better. He w <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I know that we've seen instant coffee advertisement in the anime, but like this vending machine has Leroro on top, Quant, and Yu Hansung, bro. <laughs> what is this marketing? It's crazy. <laughs> I, it's it's actually pretty cool though. Just the over just corporatization in Korea, so it's not even Tower of God, right? You just have like brand name, just like instant coffee mix and vending machines. Wanted Kun to feel like it wasn't his fault that their team lost the game. If someone was going to fail the test because of it, there was no reason that he should. I just realized Yuri Zahad was also here. Yeah, no, Yuri Zahad is also here in the ad. I'm not sure what they're advertising here. Maybe a different flavor of soju? <laughs> Black coffee? I'm not sure, but Yuri Sahad is also here. ...that their team lost the game. If someone was going to fail the test because of it, there was no reason that he should have to shoulder the blame of having caused it. You see, Shibisu believed that Kun gave his all, and because of that, he felt that nobody had a right to be faulting Kun for trying his best. Sure, it would have been worth it had Endodacy kept Bam away from Rachel, but now Kun wasn't so sure anymore. I mean, Bam had found who he was looking for. The mm -hmm. way Kun saw it, Bam no longer had any reason to keep climbing the tower. Especially since Rachel likely failed the test. If she wasn't going to climb the tower, then there was definitely no way that Bam would either. This was and, the and, only thing that would have guaranteed- And then the crazy shit is, in this, in, in this section, right? 
Like, Rachel can't climb the tower. And she's supposed to do this test next, and she can't. So, Hansung planned this such that Bam would take that test and meet the floor admin in her place just because King Zahat also did that a long time ago. Again, like, it's crazy how many steps ahead Yu Hansung is of all, like, I know Kun is very smart, but like, Hansung has been just like 10 steps ahead of everyone else from the beginning. Bam's climb. And that's exactly what Kun tried to make happen. He went through all that work, failed his own test, and even manipulated a ranker just so that he could save Rachel. As for why he did it, well, that brings us to a scene that explains a bit more about Kun's Maria. past. To another flashback involving the girl Maria. If you don't remember, Maria is technically she betrayed one of us. Kun's sisters. But because the only thing related to them is their father, it was as if they weren't even related at all. Remember. Alabama ass, justification, what, long, 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 distant cousins, what, what is what? The Kun family has many different branches. Yeah, but it comes from the same daddy ball sack over here. So there's gonna be, uh, well, well, actually, if you look at this family tree here, if you look at this family tree here, right? Yes, the top, top one makes three, but the D3 doesn't make the bottom two, right? So left and right here technically are... Bit different. Well, it's it's still from Granddaddy Balsack, but it's a bit different, right? It, it, it's it's a little separate. Ah, it's, it is a gray rat situation with, with how Eris Gray Rat is like, you know, far enough from Rudy, but it's like, you know, there are some traces, there's some faint traces, but distant cousins, you know, it's suddenly it's, it's all right. It, it's just a bit okay. Each of which are led by a different wife to the main head. Edward. Wife A, wife B, but wife because C. Because Kun was a rather talented child. He was able to grow up as part of the main family, a place in which it was very common to see his so-called relatives fight over power every single day. It's all competition, day. it's not a family. However, there was one person who stood out in this constant conflict as an outlier. Maria. Maria. She always treated others with kindness and respect. Unlike everyone else, she truly cared for the people around her. That That's why she manipulated him and became Zahad Princess, and then you got kicked out is what? What's the logic? That's why Kun believed that she deserved to become a princess. Okay. If anyone within the Kun family was allowed to be happy, Kun felt that it had to be her. Despite it being his duty to his own branch to get his full biological sister into that position, Kun still made it so that Maria was the one to become the princess. Maybe she it's deserved what it, who knows? Personally wanted to do. The thing is, ever since that day, oh. something within his heart has been missing. Just like with the hide and seek test, everything went according to his plan. So it didn't make sense to feel like there was this overwhelming gap inside of him. Kun just couldn't understand what it was he lost when he sent Maria to become a princess. But he knew that the reason he was climbing the tower was to figure out what that was. Not only that, but he also thought that perhaps by watching Bam and Rachel's peculiar Then he can figure out what the missing gap is in his hole in the heart. Relationship, he just might be able to find what it is he's looking for. I thought he already understood the whole, you know, the betrayal part, and he saw Bum and Rachel as if the same thing happening all over, but for Bum instead. So he wants to prevent that from happening, but it's just like, nah. He just feels like something's missing, so he's carefully watching them to see what's gonna happen. What is he missing? Some kind of closure? I don't know, this is too deep for me. He wanted to continue to observe Bum chase after Rachel, all while Rachel looked after Bum. But he never had any intention of letting Bam catch up to her. At least not until he found whatever it was he needed to find. It was a reason deeply rooted within his own selfish desires, just like the situation with Maria. In any case, this was all stuff that Kun was telling to Rack. And <laughs> Do you think Rack was listening? <laughs> Rack don't give a fuck. He'd been eating the Snickers bar the entire time while Kun was having a, like a mental breakdown giving his life story. Oh, he couldn't personally understand what it was he felt he was missing, Rack already knew exactly what it was. What? He immediately recognized the faults within Kun's supposed perfect planning. I believe it. Rack is just intuitively so good, right? Like, he may not be textbook smart, but he just, at the core heart of things, he just understands. He has a good sense of judgment, instincts, intuition. You see, knowing that Maria was someone special, Rack wouldn't have sent her away to the king. If being by the king's side was a position that he felt she was truly worthy of having, then Rack would have killed the king with his own hands and made hmm. himself the king. That way, the person sitting next to him would have been the person he wanted to be with. 
I mean, it's not that simple because this is King Zahad, like the owner of the tower or the ruler of the towers. It's not that simple, but he is right. That's what you should do if you truly love Maria, I guess. Instead of letting her go to someone else, Rack would have bought for this supposedly special person. Based. He was essentially trying to say that what Kun was missing was his balls. Of course, <laughs> Rack's mindset was one that Kun just couldn't. All right, so the thing that he was missing is his balls. So, uh, well, will, will he understand that he's missing his balls as he watches Bomb and Rachel? Maybe. I don't know. The more pathetic moments Bomb has with Rachel, like, I don't know how much, like, he already knows that Ra Ra Rachel most likely did something to Bomb, right? Like, everyone knows something is wrong at the end of Tower of God, right? Even though Rachel was saying, I am the main character now, Mr. Blue Turtle was not about it. He's like, Mm -mm, mm -mm. So, after understanding all the betrayals and the, I don't know, the pathetic just chasing of a master like a p lost puppy, is, is Blue Turtle gonna realize that, oh shit, Bomb doesn't have got balls. I don't got balls. None of us got balls. Rat got balls. Let's learn how to get balls. I not quite understand. But I think the problem was that both sides couldn't fully comprehend what the other was thinking. Though, Rack was certainly giving Kun something worth thinking about. And that was that he should be fighting for the person he wants to be by his side. It may already Bum. be too late with Not Maria, Maria, but Bum. he can definitely still fight towards staying with Bam. <laughs> yeah. In any case, that's when Bam came in to tell the two that he would continue up the tower. Not for his own personal reasons, but just because he wanted to help Rachel achieve her goal. Oh! 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 oh just, oh! Just, oh! Oh! I hate this shit! I hate this shit! He just throws away all personal ambitions over this girl that just hates him so much because she wants to be the star instead. I hate this shit. Oh, it just kills me inside. Oh. So hearing Bam ask for help to climb the tower made Kun finally realize what it was he was missing. Balls. He should have asked Maria the exact same thing that Bam was asking of him here. He should have asked to go with her up the tower. An okay. option he didn't even realize existed up until now. Hmm. Anyway. Given that Kun was going- Would she have said yes? Would they have climbed the tower together? Was Maria even being a Princess Zahad a betrayal from Maria's side? I don't even know. Did Maria betray Blue Turtle? No, it was more the family just kicked him out after all that shit. I don't know, actually. ...to help Bam help Rachel. That meant they needed to figure out how to get Rachel to participate in the next test. A job that Kun felt was best suited to him. Nah. Nah. And this is the craziest thing! We're like, all right, let's strategize. We got our motivations back. How are we gonna get Rachel to climb the tower again? Well, we can like have some, you know, plans and strategies to make sure that she can, you know, do it. And then Yu Hansung knew it the entire time. He had this shit all set up. In the meantime, though, Bam would have to work towards getting stronger and building a bigger team with people that he could trust. Rip Serena. And Rack was designated as the group's leader. Wow. After this, there was a scene involving both Serena and Shibisu, in which we gain insight into how Serena views Bam's peculiar nature. You see, she understood why it was Ho hated Bam, because she too saw just how different Bam really was. Yeah. He was the type of person who could stay focused on a single goal, one that wasn't related to climbing the tower. And the progress he made was one that no one could seem to keep up with. It eventually got to the point where Serena felt that she couldn't beat him no matter what. Fair. I don't think any, like, like, do you, does anyone in chat actually think that Serena, if she kept working hard, could, like, surpass Bum? Well, you don't have to surpass Bum. Is Shibisu ever gonna surpass Bum? He's not, but he has his own role. He has his own utility carved in, right? Serena just, I don't know. Again, two sides of the same coin for Serena and Shibisu, and maybe Serena at home as well, where both sides is like, damn, I really, this, this sucks. It's a skill issue, but one side was like, I hate you so much for this, and I'm going to try to do some shit like, oh, and Serena's like, you know what? I think my time is up. I'm washed. I'm retiring. I can respect that. This led to feelings of both envy and bitterness. Feelings that could only be directed towards Bam. The thing is, Serena likely wasn't the only person feeling that way. Shibisu. Everyone else was watching Bam from a distance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But Endorsey and I, like... I don't consider Serena in the same tier as Endorsey or not, right? They can, like, they don't have to surpass. They can keep up. Like, Serena is like a jobber, you know? Amongst a group of monsters with, like, crazy titles and backgrounds and crazy families. You got Serena, who's just like a washed-up hag, and it's not her fault. It's just life dealt her a shitty hand, and she's just trying to make best of it, but it's a little too late, right? 
but very few would ever want to interact with him because of how much he stands out. He was just too different from the rest of them. That's why when he tried to recruit people to his team with the purpose of helping Rachel, none would even give him the time of really? day. Really? The only one who would actually Shibisu. make a conversation with him was Endorisi. Never mind. She wanted to know why Baum was so obsessed with Rachel, to know what it was that made her so special. You see, when Endorisi saw Rachel for the first time, she too felt that something was different about her. That's what made her want to be on her team. <laughs> Don't you dare tell me Rachel has charisma, nah. No. This is not aura. This is not charisma. No. Nah, this bitch just looks down at the entire time looking all gloomy as fuck. Nah, go eat your fucking 70% discount apples in your fucking room and rot in the bed. Nah, dude. But after watching Rachel proceed through more and more of the tests, and Odyssey finally realized that she was nothing more than an ordinary girl. She is! She does nothing! Name one thing! Name one single thing that she did well in the test of her own efforts that warranted her to pass the test. She might be, like, even Paracule put more effort in. Straight up. Can you honestly tell me one thing that Rachel did in any of the tests that was significant other than pushing bum, right? Other than pushing bum, the dude who hard carried her up. <laughs> what did she do? She did nothing. She did absolutely fucking nothing. And she's not even a puppet master. She is a puppet. Yu Han Sun clearly, you know, played this shit so that, you know, Rachel would somehow betray Bomb. Was that his plan too? Maybe. But like, clearly it was his entire goals that had her climb the way. Even episode 13, you look in the beginning, head on made Rachel watch Bomb pass in some weird cuckold way. I swear to God, Han Sung and head on was already talking together about that shit. So... Bam then told Endor to see what he told Rachel here in the anime. He began with a story of how he first met Rachel. Before Bam even knew who anyone was, he lived in a world of complete darkness except for one single light above him. <laughs> that was in Rachel! Order to reach that light, Bam decided to build a tower of rubble. But when he finally arrived at the top, he quickly realized that nothing he would do to the light would allow him to leave. It was clear that whoever locked him into this world of darkness wanted him to stay there. Did King Zahad lock him in the darkness? Because, like, when Rachel and Baum get out of this little place, they're, they're just got an eye of Zahad in this place. Baum, like, he's, he, like, it, what, you're just going to give him a mysterious flash, like, flashback backstory where it's like, you don't even know anything. He just existed in this darkness and then built a rubble tower up and then he met Rachel. Like, clearly someone locked him here for a reason because he's a monster. And the best, you know, I, best intuition is, well... You know, kings, they're scared of other people rising up and taking their positions. So he locked him up because he's an irregular. I don't know, but like this backstory here is so crucial to understanding who exactly is 25th the bomb. So Bam couldn't do anything but cry at the realization that he was completely alone. No amount of physical pain could compare to the emotional distress that came from having to accept that he could be by himself forever. Fortunately, that all changed when one day the ceiling began to move. As the light above him began to grow bigger and bigger, eventually a girl could be seen emerging from it. Why was she there? Why did Rachel suddenly just dig a hole in that one place? That's another question. Why? What, what made her even dig here? It was after this very moment that Bam began to experience life as a human being. I swear to God, if Yu Han Sung was already in contact with Rachel before episode 1 and told Rachel to dig this hole and get Bam out because that was the entire plan. Nah, I, don't, I doubt it goes that far back. That is... We were reaching in the anime reactions, but there was a lot of things that we could, you know, do multiple assumptions based off of. This is like, nah, it can't be Han Sung. This gotta like be, this gotta be even more crazy. It's gotta be someone entirely different, like King Zahad, someone so significant in the story that we don't even know about. He finally had a companion who could save him from his lonely world of isolation. That's why Bam decided he would follow Rachel wherever she went. I mean, he pretty much feels like Rachel saved his life. It's like a mom, it's like a lost puppy, it's like a stray dog saying, Oh my god, it's a new, it's a new owner, oh my god, please, please, hey, save me, save me. And that was something Bam created a serious bond over. Now, switching over to Kun's conversation with Lidado, this was where the most revealing parts of the episode were cut out. We were supposed to see exactly how Kun set everything up before the test. His entire plan as it was made from the very beginning. Something that wasn't ever fully explained. It starts in a very similar way to the anime. Hwadiyun met with Kun to plant the seeds of suspicion. 
There wasn't any proof to back up what she was saying about Ho, but she is the best girl the of Tower of God. Said made it seem as if she wasn't lying. So, just in case Hua Diyun was in fact correct, Kun set up various precautions prior to the test. He bribed one of his classmates into monitoring Ho for Zoro? Any odd behavior. He bribed Zoro? He saw a few chapters back who lived in the room next to Ho's. He oh. was the one that told Kun that someone had left some sort of note in Ho's room. Not only that, but he also mentioned that something about Michelle Light had come up as a topic. So this spurred Kun to sneak into Ho's room and find that note. After confirming what it said, Kun immediately went to Rachel to tell her that she was being targeted. Now, Kun consulting Rachel before anyone else may seem like rather odd behavior. But remember, Kun didn't yet have any ill will towards Rachel. Yeah, that kind of chill in at fact, the moment. He didn't even suspect her of being up to anything nefarious. So, he saw no issue with talking to Rachel about the current situation. He also wanted to know if he should go and tell Bam as well. But Rachel refused to allow Bam to know what was happening since she didn't want him to get hurt anymore. She told Kun that it was better if she was the only one to get hurt. Hmm. I mean, she was cap, the one trying cap, to go up the tower cap. after all. So, she felt her problems should be her responsibility alone. <laughs> But knowing this was something that- That's the exact antithesis of what Rachel is. Her problems, her responsibility alone, all she does is ride the coattails of everyone else and fucks everyone over. Bam would never accept. Kun decided to find a way to help both Rachel and Bam move up the tower without either having to get hurt. It was a task that became exponentially harder when he found out he wasn't on either of their teams. That's why he had to seek out Endodice for her assistance. Kun was very straight to the point when he confronted her. In exchange for helping her with her own goals, all she had to do was keep Bam away from Rachel. Initially, Endodice saw no point in getting caught up in other people's business. But once she saw what exactly it was that Kun was trying to do, she decided it may not be so bad to go along with it. Ooh. After that, the next step for Kun was to convince Larry to betray his team. <laughs> this was actually fairly easy because he was already invested in seeing more of Bam's potential. Okay, it wasn't the coercing in the bedroom? No, no, no. Laure is obviously Shinsu master kind of from family, right? Like, whatever his family clan is. Like, they got some crazy Shinsu control, so obviously he is invested in, like, Bomb's potential. That was the last step that needed to be taken prior to the test. But there was still one final thing that Kun needed to do. And it was arguably the hardest part of the entire plan. While Make taking his own fool test, everyone else? Kun needed to manipulate Quant. But that wasn't as simple as they made it seem in the anime. Really? I thought Quant was so stupid that we were just running laps around him. Kun didn't just tell Quant to watch out for Ho. No, Kun was out here doing some 4D chess maneuvers while everyone else was still playing checkers. Okay. You see, he made it seem as if he was teaming up with Ho to take out Rachel. Kun straight up told Quant that in exchange for making his own team lose, then Ho would take out Rachel. Okay. He wanted Quant to believe that he'd just guaranteed himself a passing position since the best seated light bearer was about to be taken out in the next test. Remember, because Rachel performed so well in a previous test, she was given best seed points as a She did not perform. Where shit. No, Ghost did everything. Ghost and Endorsey did everything. Fuck you. She was given best seed points as a light bearer. This all went towards making Quant think that he'd been had. But it was actually reverse psychology into making Quant do everything he could to foil Kun's supposed plan. Because he'd just been so humiliated, Quant vowed to do everything he could to prevent Rachel from being taken out by Ho. <laughs> well, <laughs> he didn't try that hard, I guess, then. To him, that would be his way of getting back at Kun. The thing is, no. this was exactly how Kun wanted Quant to react. You dumbass. He was basically using Quant's ego against him in order to get a ranker to protect Rachel. It was a plan that ensured both Bam and Rachel would be safe since the two would be protected by the strongest people in the area. A princess and a ranker. Mm -hmm. All in all, this was actually incredible. And it didn't do shit. A princess and a ranker could not stop Ho from, you know, stabbing Michelle Light. Amazing. Area. A princess and a ranker. All in all, this was actually incredibly ingenious. Much more planning and manipulation was put into this than how the anime made it seem. Yeah, there's like 13 different things that he was doing to set this stuff up. I honestly lost track at some point, but he was like bribing, he was like doing reverse psychology, he was talking to Rachel and planning shit and Hwadion and stuff like that. And the anime doesn't need to go into all that depth to, you know, portray Kun's like uh, brilliance, but yeah, it's just crazy shit. But despite everything he did to make it happen, there was still one fatal flaw in the overall plan, hmm. and that was failing to understand how Baum would choose to react. In any case, it was inevitable that the notes sent to Ho would have to come to light eventually. 
It needed to be put out there that someone who wasn't a regular was trying to prevent Bam from climbing the tower. Mm -hmm. Leading us now into the scene involving Ren and Yi. Mm -hmm. There was a couple additional topics that Ren was reporting on. He referred to Bam as someone who was worthy of receiving the symbol of the Okay, he does have the talent to receive the symbol of the triple I. Triple I is Zahad. Uh, if you receive a symbol, what do you become? I would assume Zahad Princess, but is it, is it a Zahad Prince? I've never heard of a prince yet, but I know that is a Zahad mark, and if you are worthy, then you can get the symbol, but that's also, that's not something what Yuhan Sung wants, right? Yuhan Sung, Yuhan Sung said, like, told Hwarion in the anime, he said, let's test if he is worthy of our own desires or something, right? Is if he is worthy of something. But this is probably not the same thing, because we were lying to Ren. We were... Basically making it seem like, no, 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 we're on your side, don't worry about it, we'll give you the 13 series, we'll keep his hot princess, but at the end of the day, Yu and Sung planned all this stuff, made it look like he was on the Zahad side, and still got away smuggling bomb at the end. Triple I. We're not entirely sure what that meant, but I don't it know. was something that required Bam to become a ranker first. The other topic that Ren mentioned was a brief report on Yu's sus- I mean, if Bam has to become a ranker first to receive Triple I, that's never happening. Like... Like, like, if you want to be a ranker, you got to climb to the top of the tower. I don't think we're ever going to climb to the top of the tower. Like, if you climb to the top of the tower, you're done. What's the story? Rachel wanted to see the stars. Like, rankers, numbered rankers exist because there's like the season thing where people keep climbing. And it's like you're ranked based on how good your performance was. But like, I highly doubt we're ever going to get to a point in the anime where I have to worry about what that symbol means then. Suspicious behavior. He wasn't sure what exactly it was that he was up to, but he was definitely plotting something with Evankel. Oh, absolutely. What made him with Evankel? I thought he was hiding this shit around Evankel. With Evankel, huh? Huh. I didn't think about it that way. I thought he was also just going behind the back, so maybe he was. Such a suspicious person in the first place was when he declined an offer to become a high ranker. This was a prestigious title that would have placed you in the top 1% of all rankers in the tower. Huh! So this is some Admiral Garp shit from One Piece, where it's like, he could become a fleet admiral, but he denied because he would then have to serve the Celestial Dragon. So in that example, I'm going to imagine the Celestial Dragon example is a like King Zahad people, and Yu Han Sung didn't want to obviously side with the Zahad faction if he got the promotion, so he decides to intentionally stay at a lower level to do some other shit to spark the flames of revolution in the tower through... <sighs> Paracule. There wouldn't be any reason to refuse such an offer, but it's because he did that Ren started to suspect Yu at all. Now, even though Yu didn't seem to show any interest in fighting Ren, he was actually rather excited to go head to head with him. The was he an actually an upper echelon ranker? Renpo was a high ranker? Upper echelon and high ranker is a different word, but I'm gonna assume that's the same. The reason that he didn't engage any further though was because it just wasn't the right time to- Oh, that's disgusting. He has multiple tongues coming out in the webtoon. He even has hands coming out. Ew. Ew. But eventually that time would come. And with it a tsunami that would shake the very foundations of the tower. This was Bum. a line that served as a clue towards- A tsunami! Soon! A tsunami that will shake this tower will unfold right here. And that is bomb. Bomb is the tsunami. They're preparing this kid to just like change the tower as it exists. That's the entire goal, right? An irregular shows up, causes great calamity. Bro is trying to smuggle him in, made it look like maybe he is like, it's looking like he's even faking bomb's death right now, right? Everyone thinks that bomb is dead by the end of episode 13, but maybe not blue turtle. But like, clearly, we are training him now. Since season 1 and season 2, there's gonna be a whole training session. And the worst part is Hwadian specifically said, if you want to know the truth of who set Rachel to push you off, then you must simply climb the tower. And it's like, shut the fuck up. The people that did it is on this floor. Y'all manipulated this kid. He doesn't know anything. And he's still being used. At the end of the day, fuck King Zahad. Fuck you, Hansung. I just want happiness for Bum, but he's never gonna get that because he keeps chasing after a girl that doesn't even care about him. Everyone's just using and manipulating Bum, huh? Let's use overall plan. You see, after Yu's encounter with Ren, there was another scene with Yu and Lidado where Yu further explains why the floor of test is necessary. 
We yeah, can't. he says like, oh, it's important to make sure we keep tabs on irregulars because every time they come in, it's a calamity in the tower. So rather than expelling them in the tower right now, like, I don't understand why that wouldn't be the default option. Like, if you are scared that an irregular is going to fuck shit up, just kick them out. But it's you Han's like, nah, 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 nah. This test exists to make sure we know them best so that we know what to do with them later on and surely not, you know, fake their death and smuggle them in later. I heard him say before that it was in order to determine which regulars Cap. could potentially endanger the tower. Cap! But the reason they even have to do that in the first place is because of the irregulars that came before them. Before the floor of test Urek Mazino. today, Enryu. the tests used to be run like how they were on all the other floors. A single task that needed to be completed in order to make it to the next stage. But it was after the irregular phantominum appeared that this Oh, phantominum, okay. Uh, the names that I'm most familiar with, Urek Mazino and Enryu, but Phantominum. Okay, okay. Is he also probably part of the, the, I don't know. It does, I wonder if he has the symbol that Urek Mazino has on his back with all the tree-like feathers. New, more complex test format was implemented. What the anime didn't tell us was that Phantominum had invaded Jihad's personal castle. What? Wait, wait, keep going. Killing many of his high rankers in the process. This was the first instance of someone in the tower rivaling the current hierarchy. Damn, but bro just showed up to the castle and just killed the high rankers and left. <laughs> and like, you have to wonder, why would irregulars instinctively oppose King Zahad? Right? Because like, they would need a good reason to show up at his personal castle and start killing people that's part of Zahad faction. Right? And that... We don't know anything about. So far, it's looking like the Zahad people are evil as fuck, right? They like, you know, make all these girls get put into boot camps, like idle boot camp, and, you know, pump them up like JYP Entertainment in Korea. And all these, you know, Zahad princesses are like fashion brand shoes that you can never touch. He objectifies all of them. He doesn't seem like a very good guy. But like beyond that, I wonder what personally, you know, these irregulars has against Zahad. And that's something that... Who knows when that's going to be explained. Maybe season 2, I doubt it. But then came another irregular who did this. Urek Mazino. Urek Manzino. Why did he do it though? Why is everyone just showing up? They're like, if you're an irregular, they just hate Zahad for some reason. Instinctively, it's in their blood. They're just like, nah, fuck that guy. And every other regular just chill? Uh, why? Except he didn't lead a destructive raid on Jihad's palace. Instead, he set up his own powerful group within the tower, which oh. has since gained significant influence. Okay, and that is the wing tattoo, right? This tree like wings, right? This is his clan of irregulars, maybe? Influence. So much so that even the ten families have started to fear them. <laughs> she means to getting an invitation. <laughs> she means to getting an invitation from the fucking irregulars, bro. She means is gonna be the next to join Urek Matin over. <laughs> now this is the moment uh uh Yuri's team had a big dude who had the Urek Mazino tattoo symbol on him and on his jacket and I think that's where he got this from, yeah. It was through these incidents that the current rulers of the tower realized that their power could be challenged. You never understood what the tattoo means? Well, if I look at the tattoo, immediately I think of like a tree structured f like uh what think uh, what uh, wings, 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 right? Feathers here are wings, right? I'm not sure this peace sign, the star, the female sign. Well, maybe he loves peace. He loves bitches. And he's the star. Maybe it's that simple. May, 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 who knows what kind of character Urek Mazino really is, right? But maybe he's just a fun person. And he's like, name three things that I really like. Um, well, I love bitches. Here's the middle one. I love peace. I'm not sure. Well, he didn't cause a, you know, destructive raid, so peace. And then the star, he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking star. I, I am him. And that's what the, you know, these tattoos means. And then the wings are, maybe it's as simple as wings of liberty, wings of redemption, wings of, like, fucking, you know, I, we feel uh, oppressed by Zahad in this tower. And through our, you know, clan, our whatever group this is, we will provide you the wings to uplift yourselves and fly. Freedom. That's my interpretation. Something like that, right? Fly, right? It's like a birdcage. You want to fly? Something like that. It was through these incidents that the current rulers of the tower realized that their power could be challenged. Potentially even overthrown. So that's why the floor of test became what it is today. It's to weed out those who possess mysterious powers or evil intent that could possibly... Yeah, and this exact floor of test that's meant to weed out those evil beings has now been corrupted with motherfuckers like head-on 
Haryan, Yuhan Sung that's willing to just like smuggle people in. <laughs> what group is that? Right? We don't know what group Yuhan Sung is. There's no name given for that faction, but they're like. You got the worst people running the most important floor to vet these motherfuckers coming into the tower, man. Possibly endanger the tower. Sure, they say the floor of test is to see if people are worthy to climb the tower, but really it's all to prevent Just for irregulars. the tower from falling into chaos. A seawall to prevent a tsunami from shaking the tower. Mm -hmm, anyway, that's bomb, man. everything after this was pretty much the same. The only thing they changed was Kun's little act with Rack. Although Shibisu had called them out on their poor performance in the anime, in the webtoon, Kun actually succeeded in tricking everyone into thinking that helping Baum was the most morally correct option. Oh? It's actually very believable that someone from the 10 families like Kun would abandon Baum for being an irregular. <laughs> I could even get kicked out of the family as if he cares, he's already been kicked out. I mean, irregulars pose a significant threat to the very power the 10 families possess. So- Why are you showing this, bro? You have no reason to be showing this clip of episode 13 with Hwarion and Baum right now. There is- <laughs> This is after he gets pushed. Now, obviously, it's out of context, right? It's out of context and people are watching this and being like, what's going on here? It's that red hair girl. What? What? Bomb? What's going on? Right? But it's like, imagine. That's the thing I was worried the most, right? After I finished this, I'm like, oh my god. Imagine if Annie News had a video where he, where Rachel pushing Bomb was shown before, you know, episode 12. Like, holy fuck. If we got spoiled on that through these videos, that would have been like actually top 10 anime betrayals from Annie News. At least possess. So him helping someone like Bomb could bear significant consequences to his standing within the Kun family. And that's what he tricked everyone into believing. It made it so that no one would want to be on the same side as someone selfish enough to abandon their closest friend. And although Rack's addition to the performance wasn't planned, he knew exactly what Kun was trying to do. What the fuck is this speech bubble? Why is it flipped? Why is it flipped like that? I gotta go like this to read it. He knew exactly what Kun was trying to do. So him storming off alone to go help Bam was one of the factors that swayed everyone else's decision. But yeah. That's pretty much episode 10. All right. As you can tell, this is where a lot of the story starts to leave behind significant plot points, especially ones that serve to develop each of the characters and their motivations. Say your outro! Anyway, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be doing episode 11 or 12. I know how you're going to do it. He's going to be covering all 10, 11, 12 together. Guys, please go give Mr. Annie News a like on this video. Sub to his channel if you haven't. We have one more video which is now going to cover basically episodes 11 12 13 then we are done with cut content for episode content and then there's random tower of god lore stuff and you know different positions and stuff like that that we can also check out but hey season two is coming soon and get hype every day y'all go and get a tower of god every day